Well, yesterday, the Central Pacific Hurricane Center issued the outlook for the 2023 hurricane season, and they're calling for a slightly above average outlook with possibly four to seven named tropical cyclones forming or coming into the Central Pacific. Joining us this morning is John Bravender. What, this, the, I love his title. The National Weather Service Honolulu Office and Central Pacific Hurricane Center Warning Coordination Meteorologist. This is the guy that needs two business cards to put his title. <laughs> it is a mouthful. <laughs> All right, so, uh, so the first question is, uh, where does this outlook come from? Who puts this together? It originates from the Climate Prediction Center. There's experts in seasonal forecasting at CPC, and they, they work with us in the Central Pacific to put this together as a collaborative outlook, uh, looking at the season. So uh, what's the most significant condition for this season? Is it the return of El Nino? Mm -hmm, that's right. One of the biggest drivers to how busy our hurricane seasons are is El Nino La Nina. During El Nino years, we tend to have more active seasons, and during La Nina years, they're quieter. Yeah, so uh, the Eastern Pacific, they have their own outlook, but uh, as you were telling me earlier, it, the four to seven will include anything that forms in our area, Central Pacific, and what may come over. And this isn't anything that, you know, we're not saying four to seven will impact Hawaii. It's just will, could be or form in our area, correct? That's an excellent point to emphasize. This is for the entire uh, Central Pacific Basin between 140 degrees west longitude and the International Date Line. We don't have... Thankfully, we don't have the history and the number of tropical cyclones to develop skill forecasting impacts to Hawaii. We, we've, we've been lucky so far, but... Uh yeah, we, we haven't had any form since 2018, right, in, in our area. Actually, 2019, Emma and uh, ah. I think Emma was the last one. So yeah. we've been several years before any have formed in the Central Pacific. So, so I guess we had a, a weak El Nino in 2018, a strong one in 2015. That was like a record year. Uh, these El Nino conditions, uh, from what the uh, state climate conscious was telling me the other day, uh, El Nino possibly by July conditions, and maybe even strong El Nino by the end of the season, which is better to be in the middle of the season. Uh, do you see these conditions maybe relatable to another season, or do you just it's, it's all its own? It, it, it is all its own. We, we don't want to we, we don't want to make comparisons to 2015. That was an extreme year, and also our record-setting year with 16 tropical cyclones in that year. An average is four to five, so it was very active. Uh, yeah. But uh, as, as this is still forming, it does look like there's a, a good chance for it being moderate to strong, which is war war warmer waters. That's, that's how the, the definition is. So warmer waters providing more fuel and potentially making for uh, an extended hurricane season, more active through later through parts of the in October and then November. So, you know, of course, I, w I worked with you over there for, for eight years. And, you know, one of our biggest challenges was making sure that everybody is, is prepared. Do you find it that because we haven't had much much action for four or five years that that people might be letting their guard down? How ca that's a challenge for you, correct? Mm -hmm. it, it, it is a big worry, especially with three very quiet, th quiet years. We had two one and one the last three years, uh, even though one of those was Hurricane Douglas and Douglas presented its own problem, it was a near miss. It skirted by just a couple dozen miles north of the state, but because we were on the weaker side and it was moving so fast, we didn't see any impacts from it practically. So getting people to prepare uh, for, it's a low probability, but it's a really high impact if you had a hurricane hit the islands. That's an excellent point. Small chance, but when it does, it does. Mm -hmm. I mean, Aniki is a great example of that. So, yeah, always be prepared. That's what I'm doing all the time, John. I mean, we're not alarmists or anything like that, but we just want people to be ready uh, for the storm because you, you, you might not have that much time, and, and you don't want to be that, that person running to the store to get water, right? If, if, if you get some food water, stock up on it now. You'll avoid the lines, uh, avoid the rush when, when something does develop. Two weeks' worth. Thank you so much, John, for joining us. We really appreciate your time.